programming an enemy slime physics from scratch. And this is just his process of programming that. Plan is to take this little fella and honk him in the game. So right now, this is the movement, very simple. Yeah, just, just move, yeah. You know, it's just a constant movement towards yep. the player. But what we actually want is, you know, the typical slime behavior of it just doing little bounces every now and then. So what I'm actually going to do is override this with... Let's see what does he have. He has a direction and then a speed. And we'll just switch on it. Default will be the normal walk that we have. But we're going to work on the little bounce today. So let's get that enum in. Movement kind. And in the setup, we're just gonna, you know, set that movement kind to what we want it to be. So the little fella is just gonna sit there now. So the yep. question of the day is, how are we gonna program in bounciness? It's a good question. I think all we really need is a timer. So we'll just have like a jump. Timer. We need it. So wait, wait, wait. Okay. So how would I do it? I know how to do it. I know, I know. You guys remember this approach function, and we use that to jump in Celeste, right? So I would approach Y speed. And then I would, at the same time, I would walk towards the target. Take that down. And this is how I deal with timers. The key thing being, you know, every time it's up, it'll just return true and we'll enter into here. What is this? Is this some J trick? Jump timer. Delta time scale. Zero counts as complete. True. Whoa. Tick underscore timer. Is that a function from J? That sounds crazy. So we'll just make the timer fire off every one second or so. And we'll just, you know, do our thing, really. So just give us some velocity every time that fires. It should just jump up and down now. Look at that. Look at him go. And yeah. give us some horizontal. Yeah, see, this, this velocity, it's like the approach function. Really cool. By basically taking the sign of the distance to target, times that by, you know, whatever we want, like 200 or something. And now it should just, like, jump towards the player. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, now, the way I'm doing friction on the physics is really broken, so we're gonna need to fix that. <laughs> oh god, we're working on the scuffed physics. <laughs> this is what's about to happen. Oh god, I hate looking at this. Mm. I tell you what we're gonna do. <laughs> Old scuffed physics and the new good physics. So we'll just find. Yeah, so essentially he's doing the same thing. He has like a... A case statement for physics. See, like he's doing this with switching case. I do this with... I think this is great, you know. Usually you have one block of code. Where you... if check, See, I do this exa it's exactly the same. It's not a switch case, a switch case statement though. And so I could say, well, if just false. And this will never be true. And now we can, you know just code in another line if stuff right that's really cool you don't lose the old code and you can just add in new code see if it works if it doesn't work you can always revert back to the old now you could also do this with git but i think this is cool i like it under old scuff physics so for the slimy boys i'm going to make their physics kind the new good physics so if you want to know how I do the physics from scratch, then uh, here you go. So right now, absolutely nothing is happening. So the whole goal of this is to get the next position, right? We're in one frame, we're going to the next frame. And he should try to do the approach uh, thing, like the approach move we're approach function. Make it move into the next position, also known as integration. There's air resistance, so but not really the same as magnitudes, which is not faster than if else. I don't exactly know it's what the type same, of integration yeah. this is. I just know that it works. Interesting so choice to apply friction right in the air. In the world, we have a velocity, right? And we have an acceleration. Straightforward. To advance the velocity onto the next frame, plus equals the acceleration times it by the delta time. So the acceleration goes into the velocity. So then the next position we want is going to be equal to our previous position plus the velocity, velocity times the delta t scaled. Simple as that. I, you can do it like this, but I th still think the acceleration is much cooler. Like the uh, approach function, where you try to approach a certain speed based on your current speed, because that allows you to go over the top, uh, over the top of your maximum speed, and then slowly approach down as well. After programming this in Celeste, I always want to use that approach, and I think it would even work here. Help if I could spell. 
You can make an array of go-to labels and jump a label to the table. That worked uh, on GCC at least. Acceleration, you know, and then that's our next position. We just stuff it in the pause right at the end. <laughs> Fix that. You know, put a little bit of gravity in. 980 <laughs> into the acceleration. Okay, the acceleration boy. afterwards. So, uh, Why are you a that makes no sense? Like that makes no sense when you do acceleration. You are I guess it's like a scuffed approach function I suppose. Zero out the acceleration afterwards. So, uh, a Sean. So now we got the jump working, right? We have gravity, but we don't have any friction. He's just slipping and sliding around everywhere. So the simplest version of friction I've learned is just at the start of the frame on the X, we just add in some like a counterweight based on the velocity. And then, and then we've just got this little constant here that we can tweak however we want. Now that so is the friction constant then. Friction. Now let's increase this jump time into something but, but like... But wait, so well, is it 337? In the beginning, Terraria, this is what it looked like. You're of it just doing little bounces every it, now. Like it sticks to the ground. The moment it hits the ground, the velocity is zero. He doesn't slide anymore. It's like maybe he does something more to the friction, but that doesn't look now, let's increase right yet. This jump time into something like three seconds so we can better tune this so you can see the the friction is kind of working there which is nice but the friction is dragging it down in the air still so if we were to like crank this up to like 10 or something you'll see you know, yeah that's not it and it still slides right. on the ground that doesn't because look really good being applied in the air so i think what we can do is just just branch that with like a check for like a check for the being pause. on the ground so if the pause is maybe if the pause is equal to zero yeah look at that mad friction only on the ground though and that's actually working because right at the end of you know integrating into the next position right we have our next position what i do is i just clamp it down into the ground so so then on the next frame we check oh is this actually exactly zero if so we're on the ground oh uh, yeah, so this is his uh, like he now. has he, like he a, seems to have a plane in his world so he has a plane here. He's not explaining that, but, but this is his plane. And everything that is below the plane, he just clamps up to be exactly on the plane. Seems to be. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Mad Premature optimization is the root of all evil and all that. True, Gimres. 100%. I agree. I agree. 100%. So then on the next but frame... When you find out a cool way of doing things that allows you to code faster... I think it's good to do that because then you can extend faster. We check oh, your game. This is actually exactly zero. If so, we're on the ground. Yeah, and I think that should be good enough. Now, if we actually wanted like a little bit of air friction, we could just, you know, copy this across and then just change the constant so that it's a little bit less intense. So now our this looks boy is looking looking pretty slimy. This looks mate. decent so already. Yeah. Now he just uh, needs to have the friction. jiggly stuff. Physics, yay! So now that we've needs got to the slime behavior, and it's just working, which is excellent. Time to do a little bit of damage. So we have our target entity that we're after, which at the moment yeah, you is need really to have collision. Player. I think all I'm gonna do every time you collide, maybe you bounce back when you collide. Collide. I don't know how easy that would be with his system. Maybe he sets the velocity opposite. But yeah, that would be so cool. It's just a little overlap check. So we'll just get the collision wrecked of our boy and get the collision wrecked of the target and plonk those two into a range <laughs> of <laughs> Hello, good morning, yeah, Aizen. How like are you doing? <laughs> and a range is literally just like a minute of max. Good for defining the bounds or rectangles. If it overlaps, we'll just do a little attempt damage. Uh, and that should just work. What do we got? Yeah, look at that. <laughs> it would be so cool if he goes here, he hits the guy, and then he pushes him back a little bit, and Those the slime pushes methods. itself back as well. That would be so cool. Shut up, bitch! Read what the fuck, ban this guy? <laughs> oh, that's sick. <laughs> I really like dividing things up 
into like small little chunks like this so we've got the damage happening here we've got the movement yeah like this is these are the local scopes and i, I don't understand why people think this code is difficult to read like uh, those people that you, you are big proponents of let's make a function out of everything you can see what happens when you're updating the mob you know you when you overlap you deal damage otherwise you deal movements you 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 do the movement or you always do the movement right i think this is like a book you read this from top down to bottom and you know exactly what is happening it's sometimes it can get a little long i agree but unless there's something that repeats i think this is great way if for whatever reason i needed to override the damage i could do the same thing that i did here with the movement or if i just wanted to disable it completely you could put a flag to get rid of it does he ever change clothes or is, really is well it a uniform for his videos had both of them kind of like mixed what is what is your guys problems with someone wearing the same sweatshirt multiple days in a row like it's not like you're going to sweat into this into the shirt you know you wear like a t-shirt below this or something right so I don't know what you guys' problems are with this. Together in a weird branch. Hmm? All right, so we're going to commit that up. Will Slime Boy. <coughs> All right, next up, I want to do a little bit of an animation on this. Yeah, jiggly. Now, I don't exactly know how to do this, but I'm just going to type it out and see what happens. So we go, if the Y velocity... Is I think what you can do is supply a timer to the GPU and a certain no i don't think that works no. not equal to zero uh, actually we'll have, won't like work. A, we'll have like a little squish factor which i'll just grab the absolute y velocity uh divided by like 200 or something mm -hmm. um, so that'll give us like a zero to one squish a zero to one squishage I have no idea how that's gonna look, but let's just try it out. Yeah, I mean, like, it kind of bounces up in the air. Like, it's not exactly the movement I'm after, but the problem is I have no idea what is the movement I'm after. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. I see what he means. So he wants to extend the vertices. You see, this is what I thought about, too. You supply a timer to the GPU, and then you... You take the vertex positions, the four dots, and you move them out and in depending on what happens or you, but you should also stretch them up and down then as well interesting Let's see what my boy chat gpt has to say about things so when your enemies jump briefly compress them as yeah. they leave the ground yeah and then and stretch, stretch them, them when they jump as they reach the yeah. peak of the jump okay so we're so we're going up and down not left and right so that's my first mistake no no <laughs> this ain't working bro all right in the towel. Oh, I see. So you can use a squish factor of 0 to 1. And then as you squish 0.5 on the x-axis, the distance between the two x points just decreases. Squish on x. And then squish on y greater than 1 would extend the y coordinates. Okay. Interesting. Time for a Unity tutorial. <laughs> that didn't help at all. <laughs> I, just I think it's simple. I think it's actually simple. I mean, the, uh, yeah, maybe not. Skip to me figuring it out. That's looking pretty good. At least that's the jumping portion of things, right? It squishes, then it stretches, and then we're back to normal. So the next thing I want to do is have a animation once it hits the ground. Yeah, it, it, it should I don't squish think down. We're going to be able to derive from velocity. We're going to have to do an actual animation and keep track of some state. So let's caveman it. Caveman code later. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. yes. That's looking pretty good. And now for the finishing touches. Oh, yeah. On the land, we're going to create in the middle. Um, and I think for now, I'm just going to make it hit the same path as the landing dust, because I think the landing dust will just work. Look at that. Isn't it cute? Very good. Oh, right. I think it's bedtime. See you tomorrow. Oh, you heard that? Studio is taking up 18 gigabytes, hey? Oh, come on, man. What is this shit? It's gotta be the extension that he uses for Jay. There's no way. I mean, it's a gigabyte. But it's not 18. Okay, we're watching the next video tomorrow, okay? We're going to watch the next video tomorrow, this one. Designing a new base building system for my survival game.